Seven Brothers. Yeah, if you want, why don't you just grab your chair and bring it over here, and then we'll just all. If you want, I'm just. If you want, or you're fine standing. Okay. So with this, which Danny's setting up over there, so you're getting one of these. You can go over to any uh, of your nipples coming up, right out of your, you know, you got a sprinkler. A regular sprinkler. Head. Regular sprinkler head in your planner. So in your planner, you go over and you go. Well, hey, instead of having the regular spray heads here, I want to convert the drip. Uh -huh. Okay, all you've got to do is take off your sprinkler head in the little planner and put one of these on. When you put this on, you've got eight different emitters on the bottom. So you can put eight little hoses, eight little hoses here that you can run down. Okay, this is the only one that's pressure regulating. So what you do is you can turn this little knob, you'll see on top, you can turn it to the right or to the left, and it turns it off or turns it on. Okay, so it, and it regulates. So if you go, okay, I got this plant, and I want to run this tube over to this one, and this tube over to this one, and this tube over to this one. You can leave them on, or you can turn them off just by your hand right here. Okay? You can give me that valve box right there, Mark. Right. So you would have this in a, if you wanted to hide it, you know, and didn't want it up, you can put this in your valve, a little valve box like this. This is down under the ground. This is up into this area right here, if you want to keep it hidden. You can bring your mulch right up to this. And then when you take this off, this is setting right here. Okay, your tubes are going down. You go, hey, I got too much water or too little water. You just turn this one way or turn it the other way. So you can run eight plants off this. And it's pressure regulated. There's a filter that it comes with here. And then there's a filter on the top. Let me see, I'll get this open here. I've got one that's in there pretty tight. So if I have like 12 plants in my garden, I'm just gonna need one, two, yeah, yeah. And then right. this is a filter here, and then the pressure compensating is right here. Where all the other competitors, or anybody else that has one of these, is just full flow. So you put in, let me get this, can you get that? So if you get one of these, Rainbird puts out one, Hunter puts out one, a bunch of different people. When you put this tube on, you now you have your little tube running over to here, you put your little stake in and you got this. It's full pressure. It doesn't change it. So if you had 30 gallons per minute coming out of the full one, you are gonna have, each drip tubing is gonna have 30 gallons of each one coming out. With the one that I just gave you, it's pressure compensating. So you just adjust it right from that little tube and you can get 30 gallons, 20 gallons, yeah. Instead of to here, you're adjust right here. This little teeny piece right here and then you, what you do is you get this, you put this in where the nipple is, right? And then you run your little tube as far as you want. Okay, and you put this in and this is right. sprays. For me, I don't, this is Marcy, my wife, when we're doing this, we two weeks later, this has got too low or too high. You ever notice that? You go and go, I got all the drip in there and it's perfectly fine. And you go, my plant's dying. What's wrong with it? It's because it just, every time it comes off and on, this twists a little bit, twists a little bit, and eventually shuts it off. Because it's just getting full pressure. It's not pressure compensating. And then you gotta put these little knobs on. It doesn't mean that this is bad, but having this, now you have a full on and off and you have pressure compensating to every single one. So now you can go, the one I gave you, you can just go right to your yard and say, hey, I got this little planter over here and I wanna water around my, um, you know, my garden or anywhere else, then you can turn it off and on. The plant's getting big, you can pull it back and say, hey, I wanna use less water or more water. So these are really nice. And we have a card, you can get them from all your local, you can get it, there's Bonnet Pipe and Supply, but every other distributor that's around, your Hydroscape, Ewing's, all the, they're all available on any of them. Bonnet keeps it in supply all the time. So, uh, there's a card right here. And there's his card. And then you can go to uh, our Green Industry News, which we have a news channel on YouTube. And everything, we got 280 videos that are on those. So you can go there and say, hey, I want to learn about fertilizing, how to kill insects, how to organic garden, how to trim my trees, how to do anything. And there's little, you know, five minute videos on there. And they're free. You just go on there and say, hey, how do I use a steel chainsaw? We just did um, a whole training on it. And it shows you all the safety of a blower, a hedger, and all the stuff that you're using at your house. How to get rid of different weeds. So we're always putting videos on there. And like I told this young lady, we'll come out Come to her school, we'll donate stuff out to you and uh, train, you know, and then you can get it in. So this is everything on the Hendricks. Do you have anything, Danny? Do you
You want to say about this? You're all pretty good on it? The tube. On, what's on the end of the tube? Now, is what it you, a spray or is it a drip? Yes. So this is your regular hose. So if you want to know the other sample, is you see how he has it hooked up over there? So you this goes right onto your hose bib. So if you got a hose bib at your house, you can put this directly on your hose bib, and then this is pressure regulating, and then you can run it out and go out to your stuff. Danny can explain that over there on different stuff that they have. Uh, you can get them in all different. This one is hose to hose. This one's 30. You can get 25, 30 psi, however you whatever you want to bring it down to. What do you normally sell on these? Um, generally, most pop is about 25 psi. Uh, somewhere in the middle yeah. ground. So we're, cut, we're talking drip. Most drip line, like the half inch poly tube, in the rate about 60 psi. So you'll see these go up to about 50. Uh, if you're going with the pressure compensating matter, like a Rainbird or like a pressure compensating tube, like a NetFM, which has a check valve, some of those need like 15 psi just to open up. So you'd want to go with a higher 30, 40 pound regulator. Now you have the blue pipe, and which it comes in half inch, and it's at all your local distributors. Now you can go all the way up to, you know, 100 PSI with it. So if you want, you can take this fitting right here. They have every single fitting. You can take it to PVC and then just transfer it to Blue Lock. And now you can just punch holes right into this and they use it for drip too over there. You can see, I think I have a couple little demos there where you can push right in. So this is flexible. There's no glue. It's just pushing it in and it locks in and goes right up into pressure. So you don't have to worry about it at all. Uh, Danny, do you want to tell them about the anti-siphon valve and how you're... Yeah, we got our basic uh, set up here, most residential, you're probably looking at an anti-siphon valve, just like this here. So when we're talking about an irrigation system, just like our hose regulator will go over here, uh, you want some kind of backflow device to prevent any water from going back in your potable source of water, just keep our drink supply clean. Uh, dress system, we always recommend a filter. This is just a simple filter. This was made by Dig. Uh, I think Henderson makes them too. Yeah. So it's Quite just a, a little few plastic screen them. filter, easy to maintain, and you want your pressure regulator. Sometimes you put the regulator before the filter or after. It depends on which manufacturer you ask. Some will tell you one way or the other. Um, I've used them both ways. Haven't had any issues either way. And then here we got a compressor fitting, which will go to our drip tubing. So main components when we're converting to a drip system is you want to make sure you try to filter it and regulate it because we don't want um, problems. This tubing here will handle the higher pressure even on the quad bubbler. Um, as the tubing gets older you have issues with it popping off that little bar. So that's the main reason why we want to bring down that pressure. So here we got our little seam setup. This would be our hose bib. So if you got a garden valve somewhere in your planter, hey I don't want to run a new valve, new pipe to a new area. But I got a hose right here, and you just put a Y on your hose. Here's our vacuum breaker to prevent any kind of back siphonage in there. We got a little hydrogene hose whip timer, and then this is our Hendrickson regulator here with the hose thread, a little T filter. Same type of element, it can be cleaned out. Up with this up here, we got a little screen filter. General rule of thumb if you're coming off of city water, we like to recommend first check this after a month, see how dirty it is, and that'll give you a sense of how often you're going to need to clean it. Um, I've put these in and never had to check them really, but usually after a year or so, okay. you're out working in your garden, hey, let me open that up and clean it out, that's a good idea. So this uh, little hose with time we got set up, we got a couple different emitter types here to show you. We'll just turn it on manually here for a minute. We'll hear it click on in a second. So we're always trying, we have different water needs for different plants, some need a little drip, some need a more broadcast spray. There goes our system. Here's a little sprayer. We'll get a little wet here. It's a nice hot day. This is adjustable at the spray head here. So you got a bigger area that you know wet, get watered, and get richer there. And you can tie in all different kinds of watering emitters to each line. Here's a little bubbler like the one Richard showed you. Same type as that one, won't put as far. This will go zero or 20 gallons per hour. So if you got a succulent, um, probably not a good idea. You got something more tropical, a lot more water out of these guys. This is a similar type of adjustable, but with the spray. This will go five, six feet out. So you can take one of those with that tube and just hook it on to exactly what I have here. The filter, and so if you don't want to have all that hooked up to your hose bib, you just go right to your 
to your nipple that's sticking up and put this on it, run that little tube just like that and put those on the end. A lot of times you got your little pot of plants and you drop these in there, you fall out, fall out, you can get a little reed stake like this, sit it right in there, hold it around so your that, plant. That one's a drip then? Yeah, this is your drip. This is uh, made by Bowsmith, really good emitter, clog resistant. I put these in years six, seven years ago, still haven't had one clog. So and what's it, uh, that's per hour? Yes, half a gallon per hour. These come in a half, one, two, three, four gallon per hour. Average uh, manufacturer will say seven to ten years of lifespan out of them, and I haven't had any issues. Yeah, and I have that's with uh, the black tubing, but if you use the blue tubing, it's much thicker and it's much longer. I switch over to the more durable for your students. <laughs> this vinyl tubing, it's a little more flexible, and easier on the hands to work with. Seems to hold up better. I've had uh, some issue with the poly tubing where after about six, seven years, it splits at the end. You cut it, it just, it just keeps splitting. So if you have issues with splitting, I would try using the vinyl. And normally what you're going to get is the more economical ones at, the, at your big box stores. So it is good to go to your bonnet pipe and supplies, your hydroscapes, your U-wings, you know, the people that are selling the professionals. The tubing like that, I mean, it's much better tubing and you're not having to do it every few years and it's not going to erode away. You know, so it does last. You know, you're not going to see some of this stuff like this. You won't see this in a retail store. But it's nice that you'll see more of this stuff in the retail store where you can't make the adjustments. They're, these are like, what, $5, you said, in your store? So these are like five. It's not like a huge amount. If you could just go over and you got a little garden in a brick area, just unscrew them, your normal little spray head, stick this on, and now you can run. If you want to run one tube to the plant or two, you can do it. And then if you want to open up more, you just turn it and open up and use all eight of them. So you might need one of these for a whole little planter. That's why I gave you one. It's just so much easier. So you can close off as many as yep. you're not using. Yep, on top. Yeah, so you can, like that, it's fully open to the right or to the left is off. So each one does. Yep, each one is completely separate. And these are each one of them is regulating. Where your standard that you would pick at a big box store, Home Depot or whatever, this is full pressure. You can't regulate it down. With this, you can so it makes it really nice where you go, hey, this plant needs this, and the requirements are this, and now I'm just going to open it up, and it's going to get this much to the plant. Now, this one needs a little bit more water. It's a baby, but then you can pull it back as it, okay, and now it's been six months to a year. I just turn it down a little bit right here. It, it's growing great, and everything's fine. I don't need to use as much water. So that's why I gave you all these. Try these out. Make sure that you go to, to people and pick them up. They're very easy. I mean, that's what I like about it. If you're going to go off a hose bib to put it around like your garden or somewhere that you're going to have a patio, they go that way. Or vegetable garden or anything like that. You can see even in the nursery, they run a hose and they just pop right in. But those black tubes will run out. I mean, they become brittle and hard where if you use the blue pipe, it's not going to become. It's going to last years and years and years. I've got architects that spec out this blue pipe and they go, I've gone 10 years and it's still been full sun up on the hillside in Marietta and they go, we've never had a problem with it. Nothing pops out. What happens with the black tubing, it gets hot and then it eats at it and then they just start flying off. When you turn on the water, you're all bing, 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 and you're all like, oh, well, I'm not really saving water. That's the exact reason why I avoid it. Yeah. yeah, because they just pop right out of the ground. So definitely um, look at, if you want and you want to do a design center, you can ask Marcy. We have our cards here. We have, a uh, Hydro Rain has a little design center that you can uh, call us, we'll give you a code. You can go right onto their website and all you do, it, it goes to Google Maps, it will design out your whole entire house. There's like four or five questions, you know, what's your pressure going in, what size is your pipe going in, and then you can just grab the product and pull it where you want to stick it. So if you had it on the side of your driveway and you go, I want to put this on it, you just grab the little pitcher, stick it there, and as you stick it there, it, 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 you push run, and then it'll show you how many gallons of what you use. I oh, know I don't want that one. Okay, then you put it back and then you grab another one. So that's why I said it'd be great for her to teach because then now she just puts it on a big board and the kids can now design their own house at home and bring it back as a project. And then uh, this company, Hydro Rain, will donate one whole sprinkler system to each person's house. So if you design it with their stuff, and then you email and said, yes, I want three valves, and I want the piping, I want everything, and I want to have it delivered. They'll ship it to your house one time. So because, you know, once they get you to use it, they know you're going to fall in love with it, and then they're going to get you to start telling everybody to use their product. So that's how they do it.
So um, the Hydro Rain product's really good. Duraplastic, I got these bags here. I have a limited amount, but this is all how to build a manifold, put things together. They're a really good company. So they gave some sample, uh, some bag samples. These are flexible here. So if you got a problem or you've got a break in your line, because the roots are growing around it, you can glue it here and then just bend it out of the way and put it back on the other piece. So these are all samples for you as well. You can take these and use them on a future job, an emergency, or try them out. Thank there you go, Britt. Bring uh, that back question. to you. On uh, the samples you gave here on the different nozzle types, do you recommend one uh, over the other on irrigating native, California native plants? Go ahead, Um From a seminar I was at where there was an expert on native plants, native plants seem to prefer more natural rain. For some reason, they don't prefer the drip system. These little bags are um, more of a, uh, a mist like an MP overhead. rotator. Have you seen you know, like yeah, yeah. those streams? Yeah. They get a little more uniform coverage. The bigger water droplets, they seem to do better. A lot of the native plants don't do too great on. Uh, like yeah, that's right. Got all sorts of neat swivels.